Hey everybody. So like I said, I'm Chase. And uh, just to preface, um, I am a trombone player. And so a lot of the stuff you might think and be like, well, why is he telling me what to do? I play cornet, I play alto, I play whatever. What I'm going to talk about today is very, very universal. And um, you can apply it to any instrument, especially to what you play. So out of curiosity, you could just raise your hand. Um, how many of you play in school? Full band, play at your core, or um, anything thereof, or just play on your own and don't have a teacher, basically. Don't have a teacher. I can't see uh, Yena or Josh right now, but um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go off the assumption that they don't have a teacher. When I was growing up as a uh, little trombone player, I didn't have a teacher either. So uh, what I'm gonna talk about today are things that you can do on your own. Uh, that can help you become a better brass player and you can apply this to whenever you do get back into school band or you're playing with people at your church or you're just playing on your own and you just want to get better on your own. So things that I've done that uh, really help me become better that I've found over the years is I always worked on my breathing. And so that might sound weird. I am like, well, I breathe all the time. And it's like, well, actually breathing is very, very important because without our air, if I, if I just grabbed my trombone and didn't take a huge breath of air, I would just, and it would be really, really bad. But if I take in a huge breath of air, I'm able to have a really, really good sound, nice full sound. So things that I usually do is I, I it's not even long, maybe, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. I just, I just take in huge breaths. I just go, just to get in the lungs going, getting the playing going. And then the next thing that I do, nothing that I've done has been very, very advanced. It's just stuff that helped me become a better player. And so what I worked on were scales. So out of curiosity, you could just raise your hand. Do you know any scales, Mackenzie? Or uh, Yenna and Josh, do you know, you know your scales? Well, we're gonna go off of the C scale right now. Just a little exercise to show you guys what I did um, to really help me progress as a player. So there's two types of ways we can play. We can play very, very smooth and connected, or we can play very, very short and separated. And I'll show that later and I get into the pieces. So what I do on my C scale is I take in my huge breath of air, and when I want to play connected, I keep the air going, and I just barely touch it with my tongue. So I'll go. <laughs> And you can do that on your cornet, you can do that on your uh, euphonium, anything that you play, you just da, 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 da. very, very connected. I'll play it on quarter notes, you can play it on half notes. Just the important thing is, is that the air is always going. All right, so that's why we take in huge breaths of air. And that'll apply anywhere, whether you're playing really high, playing really low, really fast, really uh, slow. Um, it's all in the air. And so what else I did, with scales is I played very, very short and separated as well. And what I like to do is I like to do this in quarter notes or eighth notes and nothing faster, nothing slower than that to really help my tongue feel nice and get it, going to get it slowly adequated to the music. And so what I do using the C scale, I would go, I would go bop, 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 bop. You've probably heard these before in your band class or in your church band or anybody that's ever worked with you before. And so you just go up the scale, you go down the scale, you go. And you just do that going up and down, getting the tongue going. And then when you feel good on your quarter notes, you move up to the eighth notes and you go. And things, things going along those nature. To work on your scales is what's really going to help you progress as a musician. So uh, out of curiosity, um, Mackenzie, does this feel like you already know this? Just like you, uh, you've done this before, it's really trivial. Yeah, I, that, that can happen a lot of the time. Some people will just say things over you, be like, I already know this, man, shut up and do something cooler. So when it comes to sight reading, I'm gonna talk about sight reading now. I like to break down the piece. So I assume you guys are intermediate advanced players. So when it comes to sight reading, we, look at, we need to look at four pivotal things. We look at the key signature, we look at the time signature, we look at the notes, and then finally we look at the tempo. And so this song is called Do Lord Remember Me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it, I'm going to say, hmm, 
Well, this is in the key of G. It has one sharp F sharp. Make sure you always play your F sharps, Chase, or else it's gonna sound really, really bad. And then I look at the time signature, it's in four, four. I'm gonna do that. How do I keep it in four, four? Well, we'll figure that out in one second. And then we look at everything else. The notes, we make sure we, got, we can play all those notes. Yeah, those aren't too bad. And then once I'm done breaking it down, it says moderately fast and lively. So when I play really, really fast, I'm not gonna play really, 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 um, say smooth and connected and so super like things that can slow me down. I wanna, I wanna keep it driving. I wanna keep it, I wanna keep my tongue, my articulation going. So I'm gonna look at this and I think, well, how fast is moderately fast? Well, guys, Something that I recommend to you, if you're able, if you have any connection to an internet, if you have a laptop, you have a smartphone device, I always recommend having a, a metronome app or a tuner app or anything thereof that can really help you track your playing. And so for me personally, I like to have this metronome going anytime I play. And so this is moderately fast, so I'm not going to have it at a low number. I'm going to have it at a relatively higher number. Let's say, let's say 97. I'm gonna have it right here. And I'm hearing that, I'm processing that, and now I think, let's remember to look at the key signature. And then I just wanna play faster. Now this little piece right here called Do Lord Remember Me, I'm just gonna play a little snippet of what I would do. So I'll go. So when I played that, I made sure that I kept my articulation going, that I kept the tongue fairly going, making sure it's a ta 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 instead of a blah 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 kind of style going, if that were to make sense. And that would apply to the entire piece. And that's going to be very, very different than this other solo that I would call Piece Like a Rip. So this one, I break it down. Always break down your music. So I look at the key signature. I am in F, which would be one flat. Then I am in four, four, look at the time signature. And then I look at all the notes, make sure I can play all the notes, make sure everything is going smoothly. That's quarter notes, there's half notes, eighth notes, and look at the notes themselves. Like that's a C, that's a B flat, that's a G. And then I look at the tempo. Well, this is very, very different. This says Andante con espresso. That's a lame word saying, make sure you play it smooth. Make sure you're just playing it slower. You're not going to be going like, going crazy with it. So I get my metronome app. I look at it. Well, what's on Dante? Let's play something slower. And then I play, let's say, around, around 80. And I interpret, I interpret that. I internalize it. Make sure that I can play this slower, slower tempo. And then I think... It needs to be expressive. When I think expressive, I don't think of somebody going like, huh, 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 huh. I think of somebody being very, very melodic and singing these crazy songs or something like that. Being very, very like putting their heart and soul into it. And you can't get your heart and soul into it if you're going like, like that. You want something really long and flowing. So I'm going to think about that as I'm playing this. And so this is going to be very, very smooth and connected, keeping the air flowing like we talked about. And so what I would do is I would look at it, taking a huge breath of air, and then I'd go. sure that I can separate a smoother style from a more separated style. It's very, very important to do it and distinguish it. And I wouldn't be able to know that if I didn't have my metronome app, if I didn't have my tuning app, anything thereof. And so what I always make sure when you're playing on your own, you always got to make sure that you're able to uh, be very, very, very dedicated to what you do. Make sure that you're breathing right. You got to make sure that you're that you're playing right, right style. Make sure everything's smooth and connected. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with your solo playing, as contrasted to when you would play in a band class or when you would play in at, in your church band. And so, like I said, it's very important to practice your scales, and it's very important to 
uh, practice um, the scales in different ways, practice them separated, practice them smooth and connected. But a very, very useful tool that can help you work on your uh, solo playing is if you have access to it, if you, uh, is, a, is a tune book at your local, at your cores and playing those, um, playing your parts, playing your cornet book, anything, playing all these melodies. You'll be able to look at a lot of different pieces at one time and you can go through that process of breaking it down, looking at the key signature, looking at the time signature, looking at the notes, seeing how fast it's supposed to go. And you can do that, read it down and move on to the next one. Working on your solo playing with a tune book is very, very helpful when you want to become a better solo player, when you don't have a teacher or somebody to guide you. But those are just some steps and steps. Those are just some tips that you can do whenever you're by yourself. You don't have a, you don't have an instructor. You don't have your band teacher. You don't have your band master over at your core that you can just do on your own that can help you become a better player on your own, if that makes sense. That playing your horn uh, should not, it's not going to be like homework. It's not going to be like you have to do your math homework, you don't have to do your science homework. This is something that's supposed to be fun and you can make games out of it. I recommend that as well. Don't, don't go up to me like, well, I have to play this because my core officer wants me to get good so that I can play good in the band and then eventually go to DSA and play good and make DYB and all these crazy ensembles. No, no, no. It's supposed to be something fun. So I really invite you and challenge you to do these crazy little games with yourself. Like maybe hold, see if you have a sibling around you, see who can hold a note the longest and work on your airflow or see who can play at the scale the longest and see who can um, play it in a different way or get other people to hear you. Uh, maybe send a video to your friends, anything like that. Make it fun. This doesn't have to be something like a homework and that, um, be just because we're not in band class or we're not at the church as often with other musicians, you can make this fun.